Space Chronicles in partnership with the European Space Agency. A majestic star-forming region in the Eagle Nebula. A stunning view of a spiral galaxy. These incredible pictures were produced by Hubble, the highly successful space telescope. With no atmospheric distortion to overcome, it can easily see objects millions of light years away. Next month, it celebrates 18 years in orbit. It's really been, I think, much more successful than anyone would really have anticipated. And, you know, in fact, I think it's true to say that it's revolutionized astronomy. It's, it's led in so many areas of astronomy. It enabled uh, views to be obtained of the very distant universe uh, that were unglimpsed, unthought of when, when Hubble was launched. Hubble has been a faithful friend to astronomers and had a profound impact on astrophysics. These big telescopes uh, uh, that look back, I mean, they're, they're really time machines. In fact, I, I, I think it's an, amazing, it's an amazing intellectual concept that you can take a telescope, you can look very deep, you can take very long exposures, and you can look back to the early history of the universe. These are objects actually, you know, in the early history of the universe. We see them as they were then, going on. And then we, you know, we just move the same telescope and we look at a nearby galaxy, and it's a fossil record of what went on then. So we're using the telescope as a time machine. You know, one moment we're looking back, uh, you know, 13 billion years, and the next moment we're looking at our neighborhood and we're finding out what all of that turned into. It's the same telescope. Hubble orbits the planet 600 kilometers above the Earth. That means it's close enough to be serviced. It's already been upgraded four times. The fifth and final tune-up is scheduled for August, so it should be in fit working order for another five years. It's taught us an enormous amount about the early formation of stars and galaxies, but because it's an optical telescope that works in wavelengths visible to the human eye, its scope is limited. Soon after Hubble was launched, astronomers were already dreaming of its successor. We have a, a big gap in our um, understanding because we can study the structure of the very early universe shortly after the Big Bang using missions like COBE and the soon to be launched ESA Planck mission. And we can study galaxies with Hubble, but the two don't yet match up and we need to understand what happened in order to create and make galaxies and stars and ultimately where we come from. Hubble's successor, the James Webb Space Telescope, should help bridge that gap. The JWST is named after the boss of NASA during the 60s Apollo program. It uses infrared, the only way to see through clouds of dust to distant objects whose light has been shifted to the red end of the spectrum. One of the reasons the James Webb looks so weird, looks so different compared with Hubble or even you know, many ground-based telescopes, is that it has to be very light, but it also has to be foldable so it can fit in the shroud of a, of a rocket. The other reason JWST, James Webb Space Telescope, looks so weird is that it has to be shielded from the sun. To pick up infrared radiation, JWST has to be in a cool, dark spot one and a half million kilometers from Earth. It operates at minus 240 degrees centigrade. It needs to be so cold because infrared radiation is heat radiation. And so you're trying to measure the heat that's coming from very cold bodies in space and the telescope has to be colder than the thing you're trying to measure. Otherwise, the signal that you would see is just the warmth of the telescope itself. The Rutherford Appleton Laboratories near Oxford in England, they're testing part of the telescope. JWST will carry four instruments, two of which are being built in Europe. This is what's known as MIRI, a mid-infrared camera and spectrograph. It's a hugely sensitive device that should allow some groundbreaking scientific work. The important things that MIRI can do are that um, it takes images, so J 
This will enable JWST to take the very deep images of distant galaxies and also to look for debris disks and planets near stars. Also, MIRI has what we call an integral field spectrograph and this is used to take spectroscopy of objects so that we can look at what chemical elements are in them and for example look for things like methane and carbon chemistry in the planets and the debris disks around young stars. On the outskirts of Munich in Germany, Miri's big brother is being built. NearSpec is a near-infrared spectrograph that should help us understand how early stars were formed. Spectrograph means it records the light from the stellar objects and uh, investigates the uh, color composition and by this gives the uh, scientists uh, diagnostic methods to find out what the object is made of, what is the uh, temperature of the object, is it rotating, and this is the prime uh, vehicle to investigate new objects, stars, galaxies, young galaxies in uh, its early stage when they are just after their birth. JWST, with its massive 6.5-meter mirror and sunshield the size of a tennis court, is the largest and most complex space probe ever built. Soon after the launch in 2013, it'll begin unraveling the mysteries of the beginnings of the universe. One of the fundamental questions is we want to know what were the first objects to radiate strongly in the universe. It's understood in, in broad terms, the history. You start off with the Big Bang, you produce this big fireball uh, which expands and expands and expands and at some point this fireball becomes transparent. And at some point uh, things started to happen. Either black holes started to form or the first stars started to form. And at some point one of these objects, whatever it was, started to radiate and uh, first light in the universe after the Big Bang. To be frank, uh, it's going to be very hard to find, even with James Webb, I think, but uh, you know, it's the first light processes in the universe that people really want to see. It's predicted that we're only a decade or two from uncovering the origins of the universe. The new James Webb Space Telescope could help bring that discovery even closer.